All right, guys, welcome back to another episode. I'm your host, T. Welcome to the Adventures of TNT. Now, we are back doing another Sodom Jam session. And, of course, this is sponsored by our patron, Alex, in which uh, he has requested three Sodom songs that we're going to go go ahead and go over today, in which we're going to be doing uh, Christ, Passion, One Step Over the Line, and Magic Dragon. Now, usually we go in order of release, uh, but this today is a little different because we're actually going to end on... Uh, Magic Dragon, which Alex said is his favorite Sodom song of all time. So we're going to be going over these and we're going to see if uh, maybe Magic Dragon might be my favorite Sodom song of all time. Now, um, if you guys have been following the channel, y'all know that I've been doing these Sodom Jam sessions for a couple of weeks and I absolutely love this band. I think they're incredibly brutal. I, I love their aggressive style and these they're just relentless. Uh, we've done music from them from the 80s, 90s and into the 2000s and it's all been consistent. So let's go ahead and jump into these songs and let's see if they uh, continue to be consistent. So we're going to kick things off with uh, Christ's Passion. Uh, this came off of their album Persecution Mania, which was in 1987. Let's go. Let's go ahead and crank that up. Now, all right, now I'm completely convinced this may have been influenced by uh, Iron Maiden because you hear that galloping bass line style. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
guys so look I wasn't too sure about this song especially for how it started off it, it was reminding me of uh, two minutes to midnight by Iron Maiden with this intro like it starts off just like this very similar riffs and then it comes in with the uh, kind of like the galloping bass line from Iron Maiden which is like signature in most of their songs. But yo, when this song heats up, it, they go like full throttle. It's like, it goes full into Sodom's style, which is completely vicious. This came out in 1987. And although the music sounds uh, kind of dated, in which I'll check to see if there's a remastered version, but it's, it's vicious just as vicious as their 2000 stuff. And so when I hear this and I think about some of the 80s metal bands that were popping at the time, um, like Megadeth and, and Metallica and, and Slayer, uh, you know, out of all the big four, I would always say that Slayer is the most aggressive of the big four. Like with Slayer's music, those guys really don't give a fuck. And Sodom is a band that matches that energy. They match that heavy and aggressive sound. And I'm surprised that a lot of metalheads who, who enjoy 80s metal, especially thrash, um, Sodom isn't one of their favorite bands or the bands that they always talk about. Everybody's always talking about, you know, the big four. But these guys, oof. In the 80s, hearing this shit, like not even now, still sounds good. Solid. Has all those traits and qualities that everybody loves about uh, fast-paced, aggressive metal. So, let's go ahead and keep things going. Uh, the next song we're going to be checking out is One Step Over the Line. This is off of uh, Tapping Vein, in which, let me see, I believe this one, because we did a Tapping Vein track uh, last week. Uh, let's see, that was released in 92. So, here it is, five years later. All right, let's see what they got. Here we go. And look at this fucking album art. This album art matches their style. Fucking Jack dude with a fucking big giant ass gun, wires and shit coming into him, pumping him up with metal. <laughs> let's go. You know, and that's what I noticed. Some bands, usually they have a problem balancing heaviness and uh, speed and aggression. But these guys, they do a really good job balancing. Because it's, it's like at any time, they can just start ripping shit apart.
guys so this one was um this one i wasn't expecting this i was expecting it to be heavy and at some point in the song i was expecting it to like go back into the style that i know these guys do which is fast pe fast pace um heavy and aggressive but this was like a little bit more slower in tempo a little bit more chunky it reminded me of um of uh this really cool song by overkill called um who tends to fire uh, i think that's what it's called yeah who tends to fire um so this one it was uh just a little bit more slower pace uh, still very cool not my favorite sodom track so far but um it made me think about a couple of things it made me think about the style of music that was going on in the 90s because this was in 92. This song was released on um, Tapping Veins in 92. And where thrash metal was at this point. Because Megadeth, Metallica, Slayer, and I guess Anthrax. Or all the bands. Everybody was releasing uh, more commercialized, more friendly, uh, less aggressive songs by 1990 that's when we got rust in peace and and so many other uh classic albums 
But with this band, because you know that they're, they are just absolutely relentless with their sound, I guess the style of this, this is as close as we're going to get with Sodom being, I guess, a little bit more commercial or friendly. <laughs> All they do is just slow down their music. And just make it a little bit more heavy and more chunky. Now, I am kind of curious to hear um, another song from this track. So, let me see. I, I want to see what, what another track is sounding like before we move on to our next song. So, um, I think I may have done Body Parts already. Um, but that's the opening track, so I know that's going to be out there. So let's try uh, Skin Alive. Let me just hear a little bit of this. Or, okay, let me see. Oh, god damn. <laughs> All right, well, I guess, you know what? I guess One Step Over the Line, that was like the only heavy, chunky song on there. Because from what I can hear from Skin the Line, <laughs> Skin the Live, it was like, yo. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't give up. These guys didn't give a fuck what the era was saying. <laughs> oh man! Oh man, that is so crazy, guys. Nobody was doing this shit. Nobody was doing this in '92. Oh man, that is wild. Oh, it's like they even turn it up a notch. Oh man, they are not fucking around with this. <laughs> Everybody was going soft and uh, Sodom was going harder. Damn. Uh, so, Tapping Veins, this is. Um, this is an album that I've heard bits and pieces of, but it looks like I might have to go back and revisit it and probably just do a whole listen through and, and break down because uh, I'm really, really feeling this track right here. But anyway, let's go ahead and move on to our last track. Uh, this is Magic Dragon off of the Agent Orange album. I believe this one came out, uh, let's see, Agent Orange came out in 89. So that was after Persecution Mania and right before Tapping Vein. Um, Agent Orange is a song that there's a song on the album Agent Orange called Agent Orange in which it's a song that's always requested on our live stream Metal Meltdown that I host every Friday at midnight where you guys can come hang out and uh, request all your favorite metal songs so make sure you join us but uh, but yeah so I have heard uh, a couple of tracks on this album but let's go ahead and jump into Magic Dragon in which our patron Alex he says that this is his absolute favorite Sodom song so let's go ahead and check it out
could have ran another five minutes I could have jammed out to that so all right so this was another very very unique track and one of the most interesting thing about this track is the black metal elements like you feel the black metal energy all up in this track and that's what I really really enjoy and love about this band is that they don't sound like, or nobody sounds like them, and they don't sound like anybody. Yes, they do have certain influences from, um, like I said, uh, Iron Maiden with the previous track, but their core sound, nobody sounds like these guys. And one of the main reasons for that is because they have, they, they were like pioneers with uh, certain sounds. Because with this one, it's very thrashy, it's fast paced, it's very vicious, but there's that black metal, the black metal elements that they're adding in there 
to create their own unique style. And they don't do that for every song, but you can hear that in a good portion of their music, um, um, them incorporating those elements. And I think when bands, especially thrash metal bands, when they include um, certain black metal elements in there, it, it gives it character, it gives it flavor, gives it atmosphere, gives it feeling. Because I know some of you guys listen to this stuff and some of the music out there, man, that shit feels so fucking empty and soulless. Vor verse, chorus, verse, chorus, I'm singing you a song, and then that's the end. But with these guys, they're really giving you a lot. They're putting a lot of heart and soul in their music. And you can tell from the elements they're adding in there because nobody is doing that shit. This came out in 87. This style of, of metal was still... I would say risky because people wanted to be on top and they didn't want to take a chance adding elements that people wouldn't like. But that's why I, I really love 80s metal because a lot of these bands were hungry. A lot of these bands were hungry to make it to the top. They were competitive. They had some of the best metal bands out there and everyone was competitive trying to beat the big four out. And I would say with Sodom, these guys, from what I've heard so far, because we've listened to 80s, 90s, and 2000s Sodom, it's been consistently good all the way through. These guys have stayed hungry. And that usually comes from being in the shadow. Like, they've been in the shadow of the big four. People want to say, oh, they're in the top three or something. I, I believe when I when I first started doing metal reactions, people would always say that um, it was always Testament, Creator, and Sodom were like the next under the big four. Or, you know, Sodom was always up there with, um, uh, I can't remember the other death metal band, or, uh, yeah, thrash metal band. I can't remember what the name was. But people have always had Sodom up there, but they've never put them like at the top. But but the music that I've heard, they've gone harder. These guys are fucking harder than Metallica. A lot of their songs are more aggressive and harder than than Megadeth. So, yeah, I think they do deserve their spot. But I, I don't think that a lot of uh, people really have been exposed to them. Because while metalheads were complaining that music was going soft in the 90s and that all the thrash metal bands were getting commercial or becoming commercial or doing new metal and stuff, these guys weren't. They, was go they were going hard. <laughs> Even into the 2000s. Shit. So, um, so I do want to continue my, my Sodom journey. Uh, I'm probably going to start doing some music from the early 2000s to really see if they change it up once metalcore and and some of the other styles of, of metal music start coming out um because uh, yeah i'm curious i, I want to see where these guys are going but uh but as always go ahead and smash that like button leave your thoughts down below in the comment section if you live through this era i want to know your thoughts what was going on what were metalheads saying about this album when it came out what were they saying about sodom let me know in the comment section as always like this video subscribe to the channel i'll see you guys next time peace